we have been discussing the impact of uh, velocity saturation on the drain current and the transconductance of the MOSFET. And what the conclusion was that as the channel length becomes smaller and smaller, ultimately it should become independent of channel length, the drain current and also the transconductance. That was the conclusion. So, now people took a look at the experiments and the experimental results on the two types of devices. I went through the fabrication of technology of this. It is a simple process. So, 1.2 micron channel length, that is the gate length. Please remember that. The channel actually is from here to here. The gate control is only on part of the channel. So, we should learn to distinguish between the channel length and the gate length. Okay. So, now you have got 1.2 micron channel length, 0.2 micron channel length. And remember the spacing between the gate edge at the source and the source that gap is kept same in both cases. So, that the series res resistance between the source and the gate or the channel is same in both the devices, because one does not have to worry whether that is playing a role, because otherwise that will affect it. You will see when you go on to next discussion, you will see that that is one of the parameters which will affect the performance. We know how to handle that. Okay. Minimize that gap. How much close you can minimize that is a different issue. Then, so in these two devices, the only difference is the channel length or the gate length L is different in the two cases, device 1 and device 2. Device 1 longer channel length, device 2 shorter channel length. The pinch off voltage for both the devices from the one dimensional analysis is given by this formula. Standard formula Q n d a squared by twice epsilon r epsilon 0. Substituting for Q n d is 2.5 into 10 to the power of 17 per centimeter cube, a is 0.15 microns square of that divided by twice in fact it is 12.8 does not make much difference for this value into 8.8 by 4 into 10 to the power minus 14. I put 12.9 here because some places they quote 12.9, some place 12.8. So, it hardly affects this number. 3.9 volts pinch off voltage. Large pinch off voltage. Now, for the channel length or gate length equal to L 1 equal to 1.2 microns, L 1 into E of s is E of s is the saturation electric field. Taking it as about 3 into 10 to the power of 3 volts per centimeter, we get that as 0.36. And in the second case where it is 0.2 micron channel length, that turns out to be much smaller 0.06 for device 2. As a result, this divided by B P 0 is alpha that is even smaller than that 0.36 divided by 0.3.9. So, that is very much small compared to 1 in both the cases. In both cases alpha is very much small compared to 1 that is the parameter which we had to look for to see whether it is long channel or short channel. In long channel devices where the velocity saturation and pinch off coincide alpha is very much greater than 1 that is shock list theory matches with shock list theory. Okay. So, measurements on VGS. So, we, what we expect from here? From here what we expect is G m 1 and G m 2. The G m for both the devices must be same should not be different because that should be independent of channel length and the drain current also must be independent of channel length. But now you can see at least G m seems to be close to each other. G m 2 is slightly more than G m 1 by factor 1.1. The measured G m at V g equal to 0, get source voltage equal to 0. It holds good for other voltages also. I have just taken the value which they have quoted for V g is equal to 0. And drain current, it is not just 1.1, it is 3 times it looks something suspicious here. Where is the model different? What is the parameter which changes? Let us look at the formulae. The drain saturation current is given by once alpha is very much smaller than 1 this quantity. The channel length does not come into picture. V g s equal to 0 plug in V g s equal to 0 in this equation you get that quantity. 
all that I did was remove this term from there you get minus v threshold square. That is equal to twice C of s w into v of s v threshold square by v p 0. Now, what we recall is what is v threshold? Threshold voltage is actually equal to built in potential minus v p 0 and v p 0 in this case is 3.9 volts and what will be v b i less than 1 volt 0 0.9 0 0.8 volts. So, v threshold is almost equal to v p 0 not exactly equal if I take this a 3.9 and this is 0.9 ok. I cannot neglect it, but the threshold voltage mainly now depends upon v p 0. Suppose v p 0 changes threshold voltage change just get a quick feel of the whole thing I just said with threshold equal to v p 0 ok. If you do that this is what I have put now v p 0 is much larger than v b i ok at least 5 times. So, this is a number 3.9 and 0 0.8 volts 0.8 volts approximately you get what for LMRs 9. Then threshold voltage is approximately equal to V P 0. Now, what will happen to the drain saturation current we have to see. The drain saturation current here now becomes equal to V threshold is replaced by V P 0 and this V P 0 get cancelled square gets cancelled and you get drain current is proportional to V P 0. There is no reason for to believe anything is changing as it turns. G m to differentiate that you get 4 times 4 times V s W V s into this V G s minus V t by V p 0 and that is twice V p 0 by V p 0 just 2 has gone into that. Now, V p 0 cancels now you can see the G m is independent of V p 0 also. Okay, at V g s equal to 0 they are taking because that is the value that we have got, but I d s is proportional to V p 0. So, what we are trying to see is which of the parameters could have changed this gives us a clue C s cannot change W cannot change V f s saturation velocity at least as we understand it now it cannot change. So, and here G m none of the terms can change may be V s may be slightly changing so 1.1 times why it is we can see afterwards, but here if it changes 1.1 this also should have been 1.1 times the I d s 1, but V p 0 could that change ok. If that is changing then you can have ample reason to believe that I d s could have changed without changing G m. So, that is what he said here G m is practically constant it will change if only if V s changes. So, we take it as V s has changed by 1.1 factor, but I d s will go 1.1 times also by a factor by which V p 0 changes. These two equations show that the increase in I d s will be seen if V p 0 increases, but will not affect G m ok because g m is independent of p p 0 here from this equation. I just put all this what is seen in these equations I d 0 can increase with v p 0 g m will be independent of v p 0. Now, let us see the effect of gate length on v p 0 ok that length will it affect v p 0 that is let us see. The whole problem is we believe very strongly on the 1 d analysis we say that V p 0 is Q and D a square by twice epsilon r epsilon 0 it believes you take that entire thing is one dimensional. It is one dimensional if the depletion layer is parallel to the gate then you can say it is 1 D. Now, let us see what happens in the two cases long 1.2 micron channel length 0.15 micron channel thickness that is the situation. This diagram amply illustrates 
the two devices are different as far as pinch off voltage is concerned. Let us see that. This is the depletion layer. Range voltage equal to 0. So, if the range voltage equal to 0, the depletion layer just keeps on moving down, keeps on moving down from the region. That is what has happened here. Okay. It has kept on moving down, then ultimately depleted fully. Let me just draw this diagram for clarity because I do not have animation here. So, let us animate on the board. Okay. Let us see what happens. See, what we are talking of is a situation where you have this semi insulating gallium arsenide okay, and on the top of that I have got a 0.1 mi 5 micron that is 0.15 thickness A. Now, what we are talking of is you have a contact put here you have a contact here, you have this gate region, which is actually large compared to this thickness. 1.2 microns, this is 0.15 micron, about 8 times longer compared to this. So, now what we are doing is, we are applying voltage here, reverse voltage there, so that I can just put it like this, I apply VGS. I do not apply anything there. When I apply this, the depletion layer starts like this. No drain voltage, there is no reason to believe that there is a drop in this direction, it is only one dimensional truly. And keep on increasing, it comes like that. The one that is shown in the slide is a situation where it has come light right up to this point and merge. So, the voltage that you must apply to the gate, so that the depletion layer has totally depleted this layer, that is this situation, that is what we have put there. That whole thing is depletion layer. Because this channel length is large compared to thickness, you have one dimension effect over this portion. So, channel closes or pinches off when the depletion layer merges here and the depletion layer here is governed by one dimensional analysis, because all the field lengths are vertical there. But the depletion layer here is governed by the two dimensional analysis or a 1 D analysis with cylindrical shape for depletion layer, field crowding, crowding will be there in this portion. So, the depletion layer width here will not be same as this, but channel pinches off the moment it comes up to this. So, what we say is, when the channel length was 1.2 microns, I had no problem, pinch off voltage is equal to 3.9 volts and threshold voltage is 0.8 minus 3.9. Okay. Now, let us see what would happen if I reduce the length. If you reduce the length, that is, you have a two dimensional region here, you have two dimensional region here. I just bring it close here, close down here. 2.2 microns, which is comparable to this. I can just draw that right here, the actual picture is there in the slide. I remove this here, make that this much. What happens to depletion layer right now? That is not there, the whole thing comes down. In fact, I will make it more reasonable by putting it like this. I put it here small. How will the depletion layer be? This is not there. The entire thing is not there. So, it is coming down like this. Depletion layer actually does not have a plane parallel portion really, because both the cylindrical portion meet. So, you will have a situation where it is like that. Instead of having two crude portions at the edges in the, as in the long channel device. 1.2 micron is long for this case. Whether it is long or short depends now, for you can see whether the length is long compared to the thickness. 
In the first case, the channel length is 1.2 microns, that is large compared to 0.15 micron thickness. Now, when it is 0.2 micron, that is comparable to that. So, you will have a depletion layer which is cylindrical right through. Now, the question is when it depletes here, okay, let me draw it a bit more clearly, let us draw like this. The whole thing is cylindrical, let us say. That gets closer and closer to cylindrical when this becomes comparable to this. We have a situation where that is comparable to this. So, here the depletion, the pinch of voltage now will be larger than the pinch of voltage of let us go to analysis. Let us take the example. So, what I have shown here is the plane parallel here. I can use V p 0 is q n d a squared by twice epsilon epsilon 0. Whereas, here the voltage across the depletion layer by the time it touches or close of the channel, I say that right now we are telling that it is more in this case than that. In the sense what we are telling is the V p 0 is more in the second case. If that is more, current will be more. What about gm? Because it is independent of V p 0. Now, let us take a look at it becomes easy to analyze this and visualize it. If I take a cylindrical junction, a P, a P plus n junction. Instead of metal semiconductor contact, I will take a P plus n junction. Okay. Oh, this is all what we have discussed now. Just put in the slide saying 8 times larger. So, you get when the channel pinches off with the E d is equal to 0, depletion layer has a plane parallel portion, all that we have discussed on the with reference to that diagram. But when the channel pinches off in the plane parallel portion, V v 0 is given by one dimensional analysis in the device one. I just put this in slide here saying when channel length is long, pinch off voltage can be estimated by one dimensional analysis because it is plane parallel. But when the channel length is small as in the case of device 2, the plane parallel portion is absent in the depletion layer. There is no plane parallel portion, it is like that. Okay. And the pinch off voltage is decided by the pinch off voltage of the cylindrical region. It can be analyzed considering a cylindrical P plus N junction easily, because here it will be slightly involved, we do not know what is the curvature, etcetera. But in the P plus N junction, exactly you can estimate. I, my purpose of using P plus N junction is to illustrate that when the curved cylindrical portions are there, pinch of voltage will be larger than the plane parallel. Some of you who have taken device power device courses would have had exposure to this, but some of you have not done or did not have opportunity, you can see this. This is a cylindrical junction, P plus N junction. Instead of short key, I put a P plus N junction there. This is a depletion layer width. Now, this is the depletion layer width that is that is so cylindrical. That situation is put on the board. This is the situation where that is R D. And this is the junction P plus N junction. Okay. Now, what we are telling is we want to find out what is the voltage across the junction here when the depletion layer goes into that portion. Compare it with the voltage which we achieve estimate from the one dimensional analysis with the thickness equal to A. So, let us see now apply Gauss law to any R. You can write Poisson's equation cylindrical coordinates and solve or simple thing is apply Gauss law at R from the origin here. This is R j, this is R d. R j is junction depth. So, the difficulty is in metal semiconductor, you cannot tell how much is exactly is R j is. No, it is related to probably to the thickness of the metal, but not established so much. So, now Gauss law is actually d dot d s epsilon r epsilon 0 into E. Of course, we are now taking just totally cylindrical junction going like that with a curvature like this. So, it is independent of length, it only depends upon the radius. So, field is dependent only on the r, it does not depend upon length, that is what we are. What we are. So, even though it is two dimensional thing, we have made it 1 d by considering field dependent only on r, but the effect of crowding will be seen here. So, this is left hand side is actually epsilon r epsilon 0 
into electric field at E of r that is the flux d into okay, into that r d theta that is the elemental length integrated from 0 to 2 pi gives me the whole surface at r. I cannot put that r okay, at r if I draw a surface here that is half i. In fact, we can integrate over the entire circle, but we do not need to do that pi 0 to pi r d theta is the area. So, it is it is d dot d s that is equal to whatever charge is present beyond that r. See, if I have a surface and if field lines are crossing that surface, the total number of field lines crossing that surface from here or from that side whatever total number of field lines which are crossing is equal to total charge beyond that divided by epsilon r epsilon 0. Okay. So, or total flux is equal to total charge there. So, we have calculated total flux crossing that that is equal to total charge. Total charge is per centimeter cubed is N d. What we are doing is R d theta into d r is an elemental volume. Okay, what we are doing now is okay. What we are doing now is we have a junction like that. Uh, I am sorry, we have a junction like that, a depletion layer of width equal to R d, and you have a junction R j is present and you are finding out the field lines this diagram is not so good, but still the idea is you have a at r you are finding out estimating the field along the surface. So, what you do is you take a small element here at an angle d theta Okay, that is r d theta that is the length of this integrated from 0 to pi you get the entire r d theta over the surface. Okay. So, the field lines crossing this r electric field into r d theta r d theta integrate over that that is surface that is left hand side into epsilon r epsilon 0 of course. And the field lines which are crossing here this surface where does the terminate? That is the volume. What you are finding out is now total number of charges beyond this point up to R d, all those cross this line. So, total number of field lines which are uh, the charges which are present here is equal to so what you do is take R d theta, take a small volume R d theta into d r r d theta into d r maybe I think I should not make it rough there like this. So, if you have like that r d theta r d theta into d r r d theta d r that is the area length I am not taking because I am taking unity length it is a whole thing is a cylinder cylinder of length L. So, that is why that length does not come into picture. That is why in the surface area also I am finding only this integrating only into pi multiplying it by 1. Otherwise, you have to have two integ double integral on the left hand side volume integral on the right hand side. It is only two integral on the right hand side because length part you have taken as 1. So, all that you have to do is how much is this area here r d theta integrated from r from r to r d and theta integrated from all over that is what you do. So, if you understand that simple Gauss law saying finding out what is the field line crossing this into epsilon r epsilon 0 total field line crossing that that is left hand side of the integral on the right hand side total number of charges present in this side that we found out by r d theta into n d into q integral 0 to pi and 
r varying from r to r d. Okay? I hope it is clear enough, it is a simple Gauss law. So, when you do that and you, you would be wondering what happened to that length, that is 1. You have taken a length which is going 1 centimeter or unity length. So, when you integrate that pi 0 to pi here gives you pi, 0 to pi here gives pi get cancelled. So, you have virtually ended up writing this as left hand side there is no integral for r. So, you get this as a, that one. Right hand side is q and d. The minus indicates that minus indicates that the field lines are in that direction and E of r you have assumed as in this direction. That is the meaning of that physically. When you wrote the equations, you wrote E of r is in that direction, but actually field lines are because do not opposite side. Okay, that is the minus sign there. Now, integrating this, this has gone pi pi gone. So, integrating this r t square minus r square by 2. Okay. Next, once you do that, the concept is clear, rest is only two integration to find the voltage. What we are trying to find out is, what is the voltage across the junction when the depletion layer reaches this edge, which is totally cylindrical. What we are trying to do is, okay, this is the N layer, this is the semi insulating what is the voltage across the junction between 0. Okay. So, you get this particular term, I rewrite it once again here, epsilon r epsilon 0 into r e is q and d r d square minus r square by 2. So, electric field is equal to, now you can see electric field variation is different from that of one dimensional case. it is proportional to r d squared minus r squared by r. So, as you go to closer and closer to the junction, the field becomes much more. In the case of 1 D analysis, the field lines are linearly falling. Okay. Here, it is hyperbolic practically. Okay. Once you move away from the junction, it is r d squared by r only. That is, it is hyperbolic. That means, what you are telling is, there is a lot of crowding taking place just near the junction okay? and from here it quickly decays down. So, let us integrate to find the voltage. Let us integrate this term to find the voltage. How do you integrate it? Integrate this electric field term. You want to find what is the total voltage across the junction is. Integrate it from R j to R d. Total voltage dropping across the depletion layer we start from R j, that is that. So, when you integrate, you get that. Now, what our job now is to find out how much is this compared to that V p 0 that we usually calculate. For that, we should take some numbers. Let us take, see now, let me just write down that here. Let me just write down that, so that we have it all the time. V p 0 okay, is equal to q and d. In fact, it is not V p 0, it is V p 0 cylindrical. It is equal to q and d magnitude twice epsilon r epsilon 0 into r d square logarithm of R d by R j okay, minus R d square minus R j square by 2. Now, V p 0 for the plane parallel case, if there is no curvature junction, then we saw it is equal to q and d a square divided by twice epsilon r epsilon 0. I wrote that on that, so that you can see now, what is the ratio of these two for comparable for such particular numbers. Okay. 
when you have this particular junction like this metal semiconductor it's a equivalent of very small shallow junction rj very very small okay so you can make this rj very very small there let us just take a look at the terms now this is on the board we have written now so this is that quantity and that is the q and d is i remove the minus sign because magnitude we are comparing ratio of vp0 cylindrical by vp0 plane parallel plane parallel means it's completely one dimensional analysis that is actually all that you do is this quantity q and d twice epsilon r epsilon 0 into a squared for plane parallel case into a squared you have this term so when you divide vp0 cylindrical by vp0 plane parallel this term cancels and you have got a squared in denominator that is what you have got. So, whatever V p 0 was there divide it by a square r d squared by a square ln r d by r j minus r d by a whole square that quantity does not mean anything right now we cannot say whether P p 0 is higher or smaller put numbers if r d is equal to a that is the situation where the junction has become very very small there merge almost with respect to that and R d is equal to A that R d is equal to A that is the channel thickness that we talk of usually and R d by R j is equal to 30. So, what we are telling is if your A is 0.15 microns R j is 0.15 by 30 may be corresponding to thickness of the metal equivalent of R j. So, then we have substituting in this case R d by a is almost equal to 1 logarithm of R d by R j is okay, about 3 point logarithm of 30 minus this is 1.5 that goes off. So, it is actually 3.4 minus 0.5 it is 2.9. So, what you have said now from this analysis is if R j is small Okay, and if the whole thing is cylindrical, then pinch off voltage in the cylindrical portion or cylindrical junction uh, depletion layers will be much larger than that of I took this number that is I said it is 2.9. It will look as if I am cooking up, but these are the numbers which are very close to the reality. So, V p 0 in the cylindrical case is 3.9 larger than uh, 2.9 or almost 3 times that of V p 0 in the plane parallel case. What have we been doing? Why did we do the whole analysis? We found that the ID saturation in the device where the channel length is 0.2 micron is about 3 times larger than the ID saturation in the case of 1.2 micron. Okay. So, now what we also found is the pinch of voltage in this case, the voltage required for the depletion layer width is equal to A that is the V p 0 cylindrical is about almost about 3 times compared to the pinch of voltage that you require for this case for the case where that is long and you have a plane parallel portion. That is this is a case cylindrical case other cases I think I will put it here. Other cases like this. Okay. So, in this case that is 1 d that will be 3.9 volts this will be 3.9 multiplied by 3 that is what we arrived at particularly when the junction depth is small. In this case junction depth you cannot talk of junction depth may be this thickness is equivalent of junction depth that is why I took it as about 30 times smaller than this okay. very small does not exactly match with that junction depth, but close to that number because the crowding here would depend upon how much the thickness also is. Okay. So, what we finally agree is that the pinch of voltage in this case will be 3 times almost or larger compared to that. Now, you make a device both cases the velocity saturation take place when you apply drain voltage, but in this case the 
current is when the balance structure takes place, if the pinch off voltage is large compared to threshold voltage, uh, BBI, as in this case, threshold voltage becomes almost equal to pinch off voltage. In that case, the drain current becomes proportional to which is known of pinch off voltage and transconductance independent of that. So, transconductance should be the same for both cases, but the drain current will be larger in this case because pinch off voltage is larger because it is proportional to be threshold voltage square the, uh, sorry proportional to be threshold or V p 0 square by V p 0 that is V p. So, that explains that the pinch of voltage of spherical or cylindrical junctions that junction can be spherical or cylindrical if it is spherical you can see we can work out it will be worse pinch of voltage will be even higher because crowding will be much more will be 2 to 3 times that of plane parallel pinch of voltage this explains the higher IDS in device 2 where the gate length is smaller. So, now how will you keep suppose see now they are in a dilemma <laughs> supposing I want to I do not want the threshold voltage to be different I want to have a channel length which is 1.2 microns I want to have a channel length this is a gate length which is uh, 0.2 micron I do not want the currents or gm to be different how will you do that prevent the two dimensional effect or cylindrical portion how do you do that the whole problem came because in this case and this case what are the difference thickness is small compared to the length so you have got one dimensional portion here plane parallel portion here length is small compared to thickness if you want to reduce length it must be accompanied by reduction in thickness let us do that here suppose i reduce it here that i have reduced that i have reduced this now what will happen will be this will come like this there is a plane parallel portion here, but now you will say this will be independent of pinch of voltage. I am sorry, it will be pinch of voltage will be same in both cases, but your threshold voltage will be different. Okay. Now, what you have to do is you have to reduce it thickness, the pinch of voltage will become the one dimensional equation. Let, let me correct it. Here thickness is A 0.15. Here you must reduce the thickness. If you just reduce the thickness, what happens to pinch of voltage? A square. See, it is not enough if you get the one dimensional thing. If you want to make the threshold voltage same, epsilon r epsilon 0. What we saw is if I just reduce the channel length blindly pinch of voltage is going to change that is going to play havoc on your currents and okay, threshold voltage also threshold voltage also will be different because it is VBI minus VP 0. Now, in this case if I reduce the thickness you avoid that problem, but then you have another problem. Here also that is same formula. I have reduced thickness compared to that. So, V p 0 will be smaller than the previous case. So, we will end up with smaller current. What should you do? You want to keep the same V p 0 when you reduce A, it should be accompanied by increase in N d doping. This is exactly what you do in the case of MOSFET. In the MOSFET, when you reduce the oxide thickness, you increase the doping concentration always same scaling loss hold good here. You can see these belong to the same family the MOSFET and MESFET it is an O and E is the different ok. It makes a lot of difference ok for the device operation principle. So, if you reduce this you must increase that so that that is kept same. So, this one should remember in mind. So, what you are telling is you can still get the one dimensional analysis holding good 
and you can keep the VP0 same. You can maintain all performance the same, still you will have the velocity saturation effect. This is all right. Okay, now, let us see further. See, what we have seen in these two devices is, what we have seen here is compared to the other device is, we have reduced the gate length. What have we done for the channel length? This is the channel length. Let me just remove that now, once again draw it to make it clearer and bigger. That is the source, that is the drain. So, what we have seen is the situation where what happens this is the end. Source, drain, yes. If I reduce this, I am holding it here like this, reduce that, what happens we have seen. If you saw that the whole thing, there is effect of pinch off voltage change, but you can compensate by doing this thickness change. But now question is, what would happen if I change this channel length itself? This is actually a channel, this is the gate length. What is the difference between the channel and gate, gate length? Channel is the region between the source and drain. Gate is the region, part of the channel, where there is gate control. The channel thickness is controlled by the applied voltage. So, now what we saw first was, if I just reduce the gate length, what happens? Okay. In fact, once you have velocity saturation, you do not expect anything, but whatever changes you get is because of pinch of voltage change. Otherwise, you would not get any change in the current or chance conductance. So, what people have concluded from here is, do not waste your money on gallium arsenide. Do not waste your money on gallium arsenide, because once you go to a channel length which is even 1 micron, beyond that point, you may get in benefit in the current because of pinch of voltage, but transconductance is not changing. What you look for is not the just the current increase, transconductance for higher speed, because charging ability comes up from delta I d by delta V g, that should be large. You do not get that benefit, because whole thing is saturated with velocity saturation. Silicon one is 10 to power 7 centimeter per second velocity saturation, the LMR is almost same. So, what is the use of going in for gallium arsenide? So, these are the people who are shooting, you know, directing their gun towards the gallium arsenide people, and they were really silicon people. Understandable because that was understanding that was available. Because silicon is cheaper material, why should you spend your money on a costly material? The answer provided by some of the people on gallium arsenide based devices was another experiment. The whole thing, evolution of the technology to and supporting and against that came up in a hard way. These are 1980s and 90s. That is the period when people were fighting out. Okay. In fact, I have seen articles written saying no more gallium arsenide required. We do not need gallium arsenide. <laughs> that was in the 80s. Silicon can give everything. True, it can give quite a bit, but in some cases where you need performance, should we really go that question we are still answering? Take a look at this. The previous experiment conclusion was, you do not get any benefit in transconductance, you do not need. Now, let us see this experiment. This experiment is, you can see, this is this, these are the two metal regions. Okay? You have to be very careful in understanding this. These are the metal regions, ohmic contact. And this region is the channel. See, what they, what they did was, let me just put that thing. What they did was, took a semi insulating gallium arsenide, on that grew a n type layer okay, and on the top of that, that is slightly thicker, on the top of that grew an n plus layer, n plus and n. 
and the dopamine terminal is as good as metal. So now, then what they did is they removed some portion of it like that by itching. Remove that portion because after all to make a short key you need n layer. You can't make a short key on n plus <coughs> because it is omic. So, on the top of that they put this metal that is the gate. Now, they put a source contact here metal contact here. Okay. This distance is 2.1 micrometer and this distance is 0.5 micrometer and this distance 0.25 microns. That all that is available in the slide that I am going to show now. So, they did that. Now, what is the channel length? What is the gate length? Tell me. Gate length is 0.25 micron. That is where its control is. Channel length is that 0.5 microns. Because even though you have put the contact here for the drain, n plus region comes right up to this point, it is as good as extending the metal. So, channel length is 0.5 micron, gate length is 0.25 micron. In another experiment, what they did was they removed this metal n plus from here to here. This diagram, okay. If I remove this n plus, I just watch, I will come back to this. If I remove this like this, if I keep it like this, what is the channel length? There is no n plus layer, that is the channel 2.1 micro, and gate length is that one. So, two devices are made. One device with the n plus layer going up to this point, channel length 0.5 micron. Another device with the n plus layer removed without n plus layer, channel length is long. Gate length kept same. So, this actually serves a purpose. When the gate length is the same thing, you do not have to worry about pinch off voltage, threshold voltage changing. It is the same. All that you have done is the channel length change. That is the contact brought in closer and closer in one case, other one let us see that quickly the result, we can go through that. Oh, okay. These are all numbers. This n plus layer is 10 to 18 into 1 point, that is quite heavily doped. This n layer is 2.5 into 10 to 17 per centimeter cube, thickness of that A. Now, you notice here, this total thickness was 0.2 microns, that is that it was etched down by about 0 0.1 micron. So, the thickness of the channel is actually 0 0.2 micron minus 0 0.1 micron. That is what is put here. That is 0 0.1 micron. Very thin layer. He not only has reduced the channel length, thickness also is reduced. Clever. Vp0 is 1.7 volts for that doping etcetera. 1 d analysis. Okay. So, at least the 0 0.2 that is 0 0.25, at least the channel length is 2.5 times larger than thickness. So, still 1 dimensional analysis holds good for pinch off threshold voltage is 0.9, because I take VBI is 0 0.8, 0 0.8 minus 1.7. Now, case 1, case 1 n plus layer is etched, this is the case 1. Okay. Channel length is 2.1 micron, gate length is 0.5 micron. Case 2, n plus layer is retained, channel length is 0.5 micron, gate length is 0.25 micron. All the device, both the devices are same, only difference is in the channel length. One of them has 2.1 micron, other one has 0.5 micron. So, what they did was, device channel structure now this one. Without n plus layer between the metal contacts, gate length in both cases is 0.25. Channel length is 2.1 in the case where n plus layer is not present. 0.5 micron in the case where 10 plus layer is going through, they measured the transconductance because that is the point that was people are making. Transconductance do you get improvement? Yes, 1 215 milliampere per volt per millimeter for this device, 1 125 milliampere volt per millimeter. 
the non-gallium arsenide guy jumped up and said, what the hell this actually particular quantity that you get here, you get better because from here to here, okay, if the n plus layer is absent, there will be a series resistance. If the n plus layer is present here, current comes through that layer up to that point. The series resistance in the case where n plus layer is present will be less. If the series resistance is less, when you remove that, you automatically will get higher transconductance. So, non gallium arsenide persons told your device is like that. But then, fortunately, you can measure very easily what is the resistance between the this portion and this portion. How do you do that? Apply a small voltage between the two, there is a drop here due to current flow, measure the voltage drop divide by the current gives you the resistance here, very simple. Okay. So, they measure the resistance. Okay, I will just go back to that, the resistance. In fact, this is only to show how the GM would vary. Okay, I will come back to this after seeing this. The device 1, the series resistance was 1.1 ohms, where the entrance layer was abs absent. The device 2, where the n plus layer was present, if you have the n plus layer coming all the way up to this, evidently the resistance is, because current will flow from here right up to that point. If it is not there, it will go through this higher resistance region. So, device 2, where n plus layer is present, it is 0.5 ohms, 0.56 ohms. Device 1, where the n plus layer is not present, it is 1.1. So, the, you are right. The series resistance is less in the device where n plus layer is present, so you can expect better transconductance. Now, correct it for that. Let us see what is the intrinsic transconductance is. When you correct it, that becomes see what was earlier, it was 125 and 215. Now, intrinsic will be smaller than that, uh, no, intrinsic will be more than that, that is. 145 and 245. So, that silenced everybody. In the sense, the transconductance, I hope you understand what is the meaning of intrinsic transconductance. Intrinsic transconductance is transconductance of a device, removing the effect of that transconductance only due to this portion, just only that portion if you take. What is the transconductance? That is, in the case when n plus layer is not present, uh, n plus layer is present, it is 245 milliampere volt per centimeter, millimeter. Whereas, when this layer is absent, it is 145. So, what it tells us is, the presence of n plus layer somehow has enhanced the performance, not due to the series resistance. And what people made out now is, you know, what is concluded from here is, the velocity of electrons when the n plus layer comes up to this point is effective velocity in the channel is higher. That is the only thing that can talk of. The velocity of electrons is higher if the n plus layer is put here. That is the average velocity within under the channel. No doubt it saturates, but now what you are telling is effective saturation velocity is higher when n plus layer is present compared to the one where n plus layer is not present. That settled the whole issue. Okay. Why it should be higher is not we have to see now. Why should that n plus layer putting that increase the velocity? In fact, what happens is when n plus layer is present, you are launching the electrons directly into the channel from the n plus layer. Whereas, in the previous case, electrons are not launched directly to the channel, they are somewhere else. By the time they reach the channel, they have already reached the velocity saturation. Some of those effects are profound effects which are seen in the case of gallium arsenide, the all 3 pi compounds in the So, now this is only just the finally the nailing the thing that is gm2 by gm1 is proportional velocities ratio velocities that is the formula for dm gm nothing is changing vp0 is not changing because gate length is same so only vs may be different so velocity is when substitute there you calculate the velocities in the case of second case it turns out to be 1.9 into 10 to power 7 compared to 1.7 1 into 10 to power 7 in the first case so you have got a ratio of that 
So, what we say is there is the saturation of velocity itself or the average velocity across the channel itself gets affected when the channel length is changed. Keep the gate length same. So, the moral of the story is keep the gate length small, but have the anthers layer going close to that point. That means, you must have self aligned structures like in the case of MOSFET. Okay. You cannot have the anthers layer try coming right up to this point, then what will happen? It is short, anthers layer is short. You must have some gap. All those things have come into picture. People have later on realized in technology that you must go into self aligned structures. Kalimasana devices came into existence. The ICs performed much better. We will see more about this in the next lecture.